Hi, this is Gilbert, our Topus Puffer, and today we're going to discuss how you take care of him. Gilbert is from Southeast Asia where he lives in rivers and estuaries near the ocean in brackish water, which means he's a hairy hayland fish. That means that he can live in freshwater, but also in saltwater and anywhere in between. Most pet stores sell Topus Puffers as freshwater puffers, but long term they should be kept in brackish water or possibly even full saltwater. Converting your tank from freshwater to brackish water really isn't hard but you should take the time to do it slowly to prevent the cycle from crashing. What I personally did was every week during a water change, I would increase the salinity by a little bit. In this case, it would be 1.001 specific gravity. And then over the course of several weeks, the water will increase its salinity. Currently, we're keeping Gilbert at 1.015 specific gravity. And if you're someone that's intimidated by brackish water, you really shouldn't worry. I mean, the only real big difference between fresh water and brackish water is that you have to add marine salt to the water before you add it to your fish tank. Topus puffers get about five to six inches. Gilbert is five inches now, but they grow really fast. From being smaller than a guppy to five inches took less than a year for Gilbert. So you probably want to have the right size tank for him already instead of putting him in a smaller tank first and then waiting for him to grow to move to a different tank. Currently, we keep him in a 30 gallon tank, which I think is the bare minimum but preferably larger, 40 gallon or 55 gallon would be better. We are moving him to a 40 gallon breeder here soon. Escaping wise, it's nothing special. We just keep a little thin layer of sand on the bottom and then we have a pile of rocks for him to hide in and feel secure. Other than that, they don't really need anything. Freshwater plants unfortunately won't work since it is brackish water and they won't be able to survive, but there are some macro algaes that will work for brackish water. Here I'm just weighing out the salt out to the water to make it brackish. Depending on the brand you have, the measurements might be different. Now that we have dechlorinated water and the salt measured out, I can add the salt to the water. What I typically do is add a heater to it and a pump. That way the pump can stir the salt around, make sure it's mixed very well. And the heater is for warming up the water so it's very close to the the temperature of the aquarium water. And typically I let this sit for a few hours. So maybe I'll make the water in the morning and do a water change in the evening, or I make it in the evening and maybe do it the following morning. We use two buckets for his water changes. One is 10 liters, another one is 20. So about 30 liters total, which is one third of his aquarium. We typically do water changes weekly since we want to keep the nitrates low and puffers are pretty messy eaters. Talking about eating, let's discuss what Gilbert eats. Puffers have teeth and they continuously grow so you have to give them hard foods so they can grind down their teeth a little bit. Typically we give Gilbert's life aquatic snails like pond snails, apple snails, ram's horn snails. Uh, we also give them live earthworms, live dubia roaches, and cockles. The cockles we keep frozen in our freezer and we give them half shell. Sometimes he does bite into the shell a little bit. It's not something we rely on for a hard food, but the cockle meat is a good food source for him. And and buying the shells does help keep his teeth trimmed a little bit. The snails, dubia roaches, and earthworms we keep ourselves. Um, we breed them so that way we always have fresh food for them and that way we can also gut load them. We typically just feed them veggies. Uh, besides the snails, they also get algae waivers. The snails and dubia roaches are really easy to keep. The earthworms is a little bit trickier unless you have like a very cool area, but we're still keeping the population sustainable so that we always have food. If you want to see a video about how we keep all our live foods ready for them, uh, just let me know in the comments and we can make a video about it in the future. One thing we also feed them but try to minimize it is shrimp and sometimes mussels. They're kind of high in vitamins and that can cause a vitamin deficiency which could be detrimental to their health. So we just try to limit that as much as possible but sometimes we, uh, we do give it to them so they have something else to snack on as well. Now let's talk about tank mates. Every puffer fish is a bit different with their personality and Gilbert was fine with having tank mates at first. We used to have platys and guppy that were already acclimated to brackish water and they would have been fine with them. But after about six months, Gilbert decided that they were not friends anymore and there were more snacks for him. So we keep them solitary now. Uh, some puffers might do fine with tank mates and some others don't. So it's kind of a risk that you're taking if you decide to have other fish with them. Personally, I would not recommend it. And that is just from the past experience that we had with keeping other fish with Gilbert. I know some people don't like that. Have a solitary species uh, tank with just one puffer fish, for example. But trust me, Gilbert's personality definitely makes up for it. He's basically like a little underwater puppy. 
So that sums up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any more questions about Topaz Puffers or Brackish Water, feel free to leave a comment down below. And don't forget to hit the like button and hit the subscribe button if you want to see future videos. Thank you for watching and see you next time.